This is a Dutch sample collection video. This particular video is to give you instructions if you're collecting uh, for our cycle mapping test. Your kit that you should have received from your provider or directly from the lab should include instructions, 25 urine collection devices, a plastic bag. Uh, the collection devices will go back in that once they're dried. Uh, a requisition form to complete as well as a return envelope. When you begin collecting, the first thing to do is figure out which of the schedules you're going to follow. If you have relatively short cycles, there's a different schedule than if your cycles have more of a normal length. If they tend to be particularly long, you'll want to follow that schedule. And then if you have no cycle at all, so if you have ovaries, you're still producing hormones, but you've had, say, uh, your uterus removed or you've had a uterine ablation, then you're going to want to follow the no cycle schedule. That's a different schedule. So the instructions will tell you how to collect, uh, but essentially what you're doing is just saturating this filter paper on this collection device with urine every morning. And you're going to do that by either urinating in a cup and just dipping the filter paper into the urine or just urinating directly on the filter paper and then it's going to go back in the box once you're done. Um, go ahead and put those into the bag, seal that bag up and again make sure that they are dry so give that a good 24 hours before you're putting them back in the bag. Uh, better to give them a little bit longer if you're unsure. Uh, they can sit for a couple days without being in that bag without any issue at all um, but you'll want to keep those either uh, somewhere separate or you can just put them under uh, that that tab that pulls up in the box just discreetly store them in there so collect those each morning first thing in the morning you know, if you wake up at 2 a.m. and you want to collect that's fine if you wake up at 2 a.m. and go back to bed and get up you know at 6 a.m. 8 a.m. whatever any of those samples are going to be just fine it is best to reduce your fluids just slightly going into the night so you don't want to drink you know an exorbitant amount of fluids say after dinner or around dinner time and after um, that would be uh, uh, something you don't want to do, but it's a pretty forgiving process. So you basically just want to get up in the morning and collect. And which days do you collect? We're always starting on day seven. So your menstrual flow, not just spotting, but menstrual flow counts as day one. On day seven, we begin the process, and then you are going to write the date in on this schedule um, and just follow the schedule. So again, make sure you pick the schedule you want uh, or that is appropriate for you and call the lab if you have any questions. If you have a short cycle, again, you're starting on day seven. There's just the schedule is a little bit different. And then if you have a longer, a longer cycle, again, start on day seven, but the schedule is different. Now, if you hit, let's say, sample number 18 and menstrual flow begins, just collect one more sample the next morning, and then on you go to the last four samples. So then you'd be skipping uh, any extra samples in there. If, on the other hand, you collect that 21st sample and menstrual flow has not begun, uh, please do call the lab and it can be a case-by-case -case scenario. We will walk you through what makes the most sense given your particular scenario. Uh, if you have no cycle, meaning uterine ablation or your uterus has been removed you don't necessarily know when your cycle starts so what we're gonna do is just start any day on day one and just collect every other day until you hit day 31 and then you're gonna move uh, on to those last four samples so the last four samples are a little bit different we're gonna collect four samples in one day it's intended to be four days after your next cycle starts all the information that you have on the requisition and on the urine collection devices must be completed. So on each of these devices, please do fill out your last name, either your first name or, or initial. We have to have the date and the day of cycle on there. We need to make sure that all that information is kept straight. Uh, the time of collection and then which sample uh, for this particular cycle mapping test, it's going to be a lot of, of course, waking samples. Uh, but go ahead and mark all of that information on each of those collection devices. And again, you're going to be collecting right when you wake up. And then when you get to that day four of the next cycle, then you're going to be collecting actually four samples, right? When you wake up, two hours later, dinner time, and bedtime. And so 
this last four sample schedule will walk you right through that collect right when you wake up again two hours later at dinner time and at bedtime now just as a little tip of something that's not in here if you're not ordering the Dutch adrenal or the Dutch complete to go with the cycle mapping the timing of these is actually irrelevant and if you want you can just at waking on that day collect all four samples and be done but if you're collecting for the Dutch adrenal or the Dutch complete to go with the cycle mapping please do follow this schedule exactly as it's listed here and again if you have questions just call the lab now you might ask well what if I'm taking hormones this test is not intended to monitor hormones if you are on oral estrogen therapy or oral progesterone own therapy this test will have very little value those are going to change the urine values uh, very extremely and you're not going to probably get very good value for the test if you're on birth control again this test will have very little value and that's birth control as in oral contraceptives and things of that sort if you have an IUD and some of those it can be a little bit different and again before you start call the lab if you're unsure because we want to make sure that you get the value for this test if you're on topical hormones like hormone creams, again, you may want to call the lab. That's a little bit of an ambiguous situation. It is possible that you could take a very low dose of a topical or a cream on your skin um, and then it won't interfere too much with the test, but it's best to talk through that with your healthcare provider or the lab before you begin. Make sure that those samples are dry. So overnight, 24 hours is usually enough um, for them to be completely dry. If you hit 30 days, as in not 30 days of your cycle, but 30 days of collection, and you still haven't begun that next cycle and you're not done, go ahead and take that plastic bag that's got the samples in it and go ahead and just keep that in the freezer. And you can even do that um, the entire time if you want, but it's not necessary. And then once you're done with all of the samples and they've all dried, so those last four samples have dried for a full 24 hours, then mail those back. And you can send them by the regular postal, uh, which is not very expensive, or you can send them by another carrier if you prefer and it's probably best with this particular test as uh, as extensive as it is to, to maybe go ahead and get tracking on those samples so we make sure um, that we know exactly where those are and what's going on with those and again just to reiterate we need to have all that information if we get a whole bunch of urine samples and we don't know which day those are from and it's not clear uh, it's not going to be valuable information. So please complete all the information as you do this test. Now, what are you going to get for this? You're going to get a very comprehensive report that's going to give you estrogen and progesterone values throughout your entire cycle. We're also going to translate those into serum equivalent numbers so that if you're using a, a more traditional doctor that's used to serum values, um, then those are still going to make a lot of sense to those doctors and they're going to be able to hopefully help you with whatever sort of hormone issue uh, might be going on for you. So if you still have questions, again, please contact either your healthcare provider or you can call the lab or email the lab any questions, but please do get those questions answered before you begin. And we thank you for testing with us.